Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day and our co-sponsor CardHoarder.com offers the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. I am Evan Irwin and we get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. Hello everybody. Ruben Bressler. It's going to be good to socialize with you from a distance. <laughs> from a distance. Got to get our Bette Midler on. We've socially distanced this show for five years, so we're, we're good. <laughs> five well, years, a couple times we went yeah, in Vegas, but that, you know, happens for in for Vegas, the, stays in uh, Vegas. For the most part, I don't want to see you people. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't, want wow. you, I don't want you within six feet of me, is what Jesus. I'm trying Jesus. Goodness gracious. Well, we get started with our trumpet blast. If we got one, you can get one if you support us at our highest level on Patreon. But with that, we kick it off with the first pick and the giveaway. The giveaway this week is shorter, just in case we kind of run out of stuff to talk about. I don't, we don't just want to like drag it out to drag it out. I don't, I don't like shows that do that. I, and I appreciate, you know, Aaron's like, well, let's just make it 45 minutes. Tonight's 45 minutes to get in on the giveaway. Exclamation mark raffle. $50 gift certificate to CoolStuffInc.com could be yours. You can buy board games and stuff. To uh, Mystery boosters are going on sale tomorrow. Right. Spoiler alert. You guys should check that out. Um, but either way, uh, get in on that. First pick. There is now a Magic Fest online. Officially. Mm -hmm. This was quite surprising, quite frankly, um, that CFB Events decided to bring the Magic Fest to you. Uh, Magic Fest Online is a tournament series on Magic the Gathering Arena, pitting players from all around the globe against each other. There's daily qualifiers that run all day, 3 a.m., 9 a.m., 3 p.m., 9 p.m. Pacific time, all those times to give any time, wherever you are in the world, you can play on these. If you play, finish five or one or better, you get to advance to the weekly championship. The weekly championship has $25,000 in prizes, eight PT invites, and top 32 advance to the season finals, which is going to have $50,000 in prizes, 32 PT invites, and two Pro Tour finals invites, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. I posted a link in the chat. I, I admit I found this format a little confusing, and uh, Bloody, uh, beloved streamer Bloody, shared this graphic here, uh, a flow chart of how this all works, which I found very digestible. So um, this is really, really neat. Like you said, you can play any time during the day that you want. Um, it does appear to be all standard, so you have to you have to like standard if this is something you're into. Um, but it does seem like it's getting a lot of good feedback. It does seem like people are playing in it. Um, mm -hmm. They're doing a really good job of posting Posting all the deck lists that come out so you have an idea of what's going on right now. Um, mm -hmm. I believe they also, it's a decent prize pool as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it, it seems like they're doing a really good job. I mean, this is all being done on the fly. You know, this is an unprecedented situation. Um, these events, you know, stand to lose a lot of money. The TO stand to lose a lot of money. So kudos to them for throwing this together on such short notice. And, and this looks like fun. And also, there has been coverage all week. That has been exactly. those things. With, been with awesome. new personalities, dozens yeah. of mm -hmm. I think literally two dozen people. Uh, yeah. It's like twenty four seven coverage. It's really excellent. Um, mm -hmm. Put on a tinfoil hat here. I bet they've been working on this for a while. Seeing as the decline of live grand prix uh, has been coinciding with uh, with this pretty well. Not that this, you know, they're making the best of a bad situation. Mm -hmm. I just, I think that this was coming sooner rather than later, mm -hmm. where you were going to have the online Magic Fest, you were going to have the alone together, you know, from the comfort of your own home, join us in our big giant tournaments, yeah. like Hearthstone does already. I mean, lots of tournaments do this kind of thing. Lots of games do this kind of thing already. This may have just been rushed a little bit because of the current circumstances, mm -hmm. but a by all bit. accounts, it's going great so yeah. far. They also encourage people who are participating in this to stream, um, so that way they can just sort of hop in there, and it's sort of like the their equivalent of a feature match. Yeah. Um, so I've seen clips of people that they've kind of snuck up on and, and, and watched how they were doing, and so um, I like this. It's innovative. It's fun. I would like to see, I mean, it is arena, so it really can only be standard, but you know, if they did decide to branch out in other formats, you know, I would give this a try. I mean, they could technically go for historic if you wanted to have okay, historic qualifiers. Sure. I mean, whatever, man. It's Serena, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's the thing you brawl. can do. Give me my brawl championship. Brawl championships <laughs> would be sweet. Also, be kind of weird though. Like that would be warp. Very weird. That wouldn't be good. Everyone is Niv Mizzet reborn easy. and. So I talked about on the last show how like I was thinking about getting into Brawl now that Brawl is free and you know it's is it just me or is Brawl surprisingly competitive like 
I maybe it's just the fact that it's one v one, but like I was doing some research, I was looking at deck lists and ideas, and it, all these decks were like really refined. Whereas I'm used to playing Commander, where you know you have a, a range there, where yes, you can play the more competitive decks. You can also just play something sort of lulzy, and mm-hmm. I just didn't find that in Brawl. Everybody seems to really sure. be going for the throat, and I was like, I don't know if I want to do well, that. Brawl is a little bit in a weird spot because it was introduced on Arena first, which makes it a 1v1 format kind of by default. I mean, obviously you could play it before, but that was those were during the LOL Brawl days back when nothing was supported and you just, you know, it was the Wild West. And you can play it with multiple people. And when you play it with four people, it works really well. Mm-hmm. Um, certain cards get better and it's much more casual. Uh, 1v1s are always going to be more competitive, yeah. uh, just by the nature of how Magic the Gathering sets you up to try to take down your opponents. It's less of a gathering and more of a duel. And also, there's only like 80 options, right? Because it's all standard, and you have to pick a Legendary or a Planeswalker, and right. some, of the, some of them are monocolored, and you just are bored, right? Like this, You're not going to play, you know... Uh, Sir Farah, or whatever the 2 2 for 2 is, when you could play Nissa, who shapes mm, the world. Yeah. <clears throat> so, really, you only have like 20 options. Maybe well, it's a shame because it was it was something that really made me want to you know invest in it. We'd had a lot of talk on the pre-show. You guys are walking me through the gems and everything, and I was like, you know, this might be the thing that makes me pull the trigger. And then I researched it, and I was like, oh, this sounds well, a little. Well, for what it's worth, it's in my experience, I have not found it to be mono like the, the grind, the you know, the most hardcore winningest decks ever. Yes, they're out there. Like once I see Niv Mizzet Reborn, sometimes I'll just concede. I'm like, all right, yeah. you, you want to go? Agent of Treachery was another one too. That's just like I'm out. Uh, Treachery is a card that is pretty ubiquitous. It's out there a lot. But, like, if I see Teferi as your commander, if I see right. Niv-Mizzet the Reborn, I'm usually commander. just like, all right, man, that's the game you want to play? That's cool. I'm over here dirtling with Atris. I'm over here making my weird <laughs> yes! mono-white deck. I, I got a, That's a deck I would play. I got a great Thassa deck with a million Enters the Battlefield stuff going on. Like, those are super fun early decks, and I, that's why I like to play Brawl with. Okay. So I may, I may reconsider There's that. some dirtle stuff. There's oh, some def- stuff that you can, it, you can dirtle. It's not, n- it's not all spikes. It's all I'm okay. saying. But, uh, going back to the issue at hand, the first pick before mm. we got sidetracked by Brawl <laughs> and I started burping. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Ruben Burpsler. Just... Ruben Burpsler. <laughs> I, I, I love this. I love how successful it's been. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not for me. Uh, it's not, but... But it's for a lot of people. It, it's a really it's cool way to pivot. Yes. Mm-hmm. We're at home, y'all. And if you're not at home, get go home. Stay home. What are y'all doing? We got to fix this. We got to get over this crap so we can move on with our lives. Now, MTG Together, hashtag MTG Together, is sort of ties all this, you know, well, together. Um, and CFB Events noted. <laughs> CFB, well done. Thank you. Uh, CFB Events. I get paid to do this. Um, <laughs> CFB Events is in full swing. They want to bring the Magic Fest experience to you, which is, this is crazy. I've never seen anything like this. I and mean, when we, you know, Ruben and I ran Grand Prix and they're like, we're just going to sell you the promo items just straight up for dollar bills. Yeah. Uh, you can get play mats, a two player edition, mystery play mats, commander edition with a four Soul, soul ring and stuff in there, all sorts of great stuff from from fifty bucks all the way up to one hundred and seventy dollars. I'll bring it up here uh, on the screen for you guys to check it out. But the idea that you can buy the promo items from what would be a Grand Prix to yep. come to your house and you can just enjoy them that way is kind of unprecedented. That's yeah. that's kind of amazing. Yeah, and it, I mean, I don't think that it would have been an option that was available given different circumstances. Lord no. But but given the circumstances, this is awesome. I mean, yeah, it's 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 very rare. First of all, it's very rare that a magic fest goes off without a hitch. Mm. Second of all, this is extenuating circumstances. This is defined. This is the most ridiculous circumstance. Any, I mean, I would I would hope that mm. any to has ever had to deal with, and yet. We're talking about it as, so far, an unmitigated success. Mm-hmm. That is incredible. It's kind of incredible. So, it makes me feel so happy. Because magic is surviving and thriving. 
despite uh, the the current horror show that yeah. is uh, the, the current uh, epidemic. There's also been a lot of press generated around the fact that Magic players are still continuing to get together. I've seen a lot of articles on uh, major gaming sites or just general gaming sites about the new uh, the the webcam craze, where people are able to like you know um, jimmy their webcam so that you can watch the board state, and mm-hmm. people are finding ways to get together on Discord and Twitch and Zoom, um, and so something like this that you would think would you know, cripple magic in terms of taking away the gathering way more than Arena ever did, or people were afraid Arena would do. You know, we're still finding ways to come together, whether it be Discord, whether it be, you know, taking pictures of your board states or your video board states. People are determined to stay together, and, and I really love a lot of the attention that we're getting for that. And what we're also seeing is that uh, CFB events, and this is also actually happening in the board game world, which I'll get to in a minute, um, but CFB events actually said, look, you know, we, we crave that sense of belonging and community that Magic Fest and local game stores provide. And they say that's why. Uh, during hashtag MTG together, they're going to offer an avenue for players to support their local game store when they play in our Magic Fest online events or purchase a Magic Fest in the box. That's what we just talked about. You ordering the promo so items. Good. Uh, when players enter a daily qualifier or purchase the Magic Fest in a box uh, and use their LGS's affiliate code at checkout, the store will receive 10% of that total sale. Nice. So the affiliate codes well, I went out to the stores just now. They said this is from March 24th, so from yesterday. Uh, so check on you know check your store's Facebook page. That's generally the, the best way stores contact and talk to their, their players anyway uh, to find that code you know, let your bob stock out and then you know whatever read the tea leaves <laughs> but uh, either way find out that affiliate code and then let your LGS get a portion of those sales mm-hmm. um, there's a board game company called uh, ILO that publishes a game called King of Tokyo which is very very popular uh, and King of Tokyo like Black Edition or something is coming out soon yeah. um, and they said that if you uh, order from their you know when you order it from their online store and you put in your LGS's uh, details in your order they will send a portion of the profits to that that store um, because like LGS is right now are just kind of out They're They're not essential businesses. They're not places you want to go to congregate because you're not supposed to be congregating profit margins anyways, and like razor, razor thin. Like, yeah. and we we can see stores fall even in the best of yeah. times, even when everything was okay and whatever the stores were still closing. Like, still bad. Yeah. yeah, this is people are losing jobs. Stores are doing poorly because of the restrictions. We're literally have to put on everybody to get through this. Another nice thing they're doing to rope the stores back into this is they're offering FNM at home, where you can uh, mm-hmm. connect with your local game store uh, through uh, a number of means, whether it be Discord or what have you. Your store will give you a code, and when you participate in one of three uh, events, it looks like either a challenger deck event, all access, or a historic brawl. If you uh, take a screenshot and you play in one of those events, take a screenshot, go to your store, um, they will then give you a code that you can use for exclusive sleeves. Right. Um, so they're they're making sure that you stay in touch with your stores. They're giving the stores a kickback. Um, you know they're keeping them involved in this process so that when this does blow over, you will hopefully you know maintain that relationship, remember that, and then continue right. to patronize them. Right, and we were getting to that. Um, patronize them no, is that the right word? Patronize. It's right, but it doesn't sound right <laughs> these days because patronize <laughs> means two different things. Right? Okay. It's true. Thing that it means is to be a patron of, and the other one is to talk down to as if Thanks. they're stupid and explain things <laughs> like I'm doing now. Well, look, the FNM at home thing is three different FNM events on Magic Arena. So tomorrow, or not tomorrow, the next day, the 27th, April 3rd, and April 10th, for 24 hours, they're going to let anyone play in a free event. The first event is going to be the Challenger decks. Now, I would play in that. And, and it's free. So you can just download Arena, play in the play in the thing, play one of the four Challenger decks that, that are going to be on sale soon. You get to get to play with it. Ooh. April 3rd, and this is perfect for you, Aaron, you get to build a deck with any card in standard all you want. Doesn't matter. Just play in that event for free. Mm -hmm. And April 10th is Historic Brawl, which is, in my opinion, the way better Brawl experience. Uh, Build a 60-card Brawl deck with your standard and Historic cards, and it's super fun. Um, And as a result, uh, I think uh, the the current Cool Stuff game stores are like, take a screenshot of you playing in the event, uh, something like that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but you're able to get these three different really cool sleeves as a result of being a part of that FNM at home. Which, Sounds great. I love which, it. Which yeah, is awesome. Historic Brawl is amazing. I love it so much. And I get to play Arcades, which makes me very happy. You get to play the wall deck, mm-hmm. and it's fun. Ruben likes big butts. I do. I, 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 can't, <laughs> I can't lie. It's true. Erin likes big butts, but she can't tell the truth. How will you escape her? <laughs> 
Goodness that gracious. reminds me of Mind Trap and the Isle of Beguile. That's a reference like three of you will understand. But <laughs> Well, I, I, I caught that. Can only tell the truth. Can only tell a lie. How do we get out of this dungeon yes. bed? That was terrific. <laughs> that was terrific. Um, so uh, so there's LGB support, uh, or LGS support rather, from, uh, from CFB events. Um, the all in-store play suspended has been suspended until May 10th. And that includes both uh, Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and & Dragons, both and, of course, also the Transformers, TCG, right. whatever Avalon Hill stuff there was in-store. Uh, everything from Wizards of the Coast has been suspended uh, for, I mean, for the foreseeable future. Don't take any of these end dates, by the way, at face value, because right. it's an evolving situation, and we aren't going to know when it's over until they announce it. Um, you know, and I they being Angeles. the doctors and the scientists. The doctors, oh, your right. local health doctors. officials, do not listen to p- yeah. politicians for your health yeah. advice. <laughs> so Please. The announce, the don't announce listen to grinders. Here. Don't listen to... Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. don't listen to the, the matches that you get on your grinders. Um, <laughs> Goodness gracious. You're welcome. I, uh, yeah, this is, this is like a shot in the dark, right? So this is a estimate. Um, so this is probably like a middle ground kind of date suggestion. Mayor Eric Garcetti here in Los Angeles said two months mm-hmm. um, with lingering effects after that. Which will you know, take you into May. Which will take you. I mean, I'm, I'm not expecting to leave my house till June. <laughs> like, and that's just normal. That's just like that's Uncle just a East Vaughn. You're just gonna have your big oh, axe. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna sure. start cosplaying accidentally. What year is it? Yeah. No. But that's the that's. I mean, you know, it's funny, but it's not funny. You know. Right. So um, this in particular says that uh, as of yesterday. There's no more events can be planned in the WPN, you know, software and whatnot. Uh, some big changes here. The promo packs, the promo, the 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 Icoria promo packs are normally what you you know use for event prizes. You're able to give them out at FNM, and there's the foil promo packs and stuff. Well, under normal circumstances, they say promo packs are to support in-store play. Of course, in-store play is not a possibility in many parts of the world. So, effective immediately and through Icoria season, promo packs may be used as a sales incentive. So, your LGS may say, "Hey, buy a box of Icoria, we'll give you a promo pack. Buy two boxes, we'll give you a foil promo pack." Like, there's a way that you can just slice and dice these things to. Sure give people incentives to play also and this is another gigantic unprecedented sea change buy a box promos may ship with online orders let me tell you there was one rule in the world of buy a boxes and it is you do not get it online so this is huge and this is so yeah. new and so different i don't have a i don't have an answer for the wonderful uh uh cool stuff inc customer who contacted me earlier who's also a patron how you doing uh who said hey uh, cool stuff inc i'm like I'm going to have to figure that out tomorrow because yeah. like we're still rolling with the punches here and trying everybody to get on the same page from working at home and stuff. Um, but the buy box promo cards are going to be impossible to get in some areas of the world. So effective with Icoria and through Icoria, WPN members may ship the buy box cards alongside with orders of full displays. Um, and note that those shipments may also include promo packs. They may double up on you yeah. because again, LGS is a hurting. Wizards gave them some promo materials. Absolutely. Let's do this. So contact your local store. Contact your online store if you've already pre-ordered something. Um, they'll everyone's going to come up with a policy one way or another. So. And now more than ever, support your friendly local game store. Uh, also, uh, Mythic Odysseys of Theros is coming out in May, and you can pre-order that at your friendly local game store as well with either the regular cover or the alternate cover. Yeah, and the alternate cover only goes to the friendly local game stores, as I understand right. it. Um, the WPM uh, stores. So you're not going to find that on Amazon or wherever unless they're reselling it. Um, Some very sad news um, from the world of Travis Wu. Now, Travis Wu has been through a lot um, uh, from the community and and elsewhere, Uh, but obviously we want to send our our deepest condolences uh, to him. He had lost his father to COVID-19. Like We're going to hit a scenario where people we know, people we are connected to in some way or another are losing family members and it's or not just going to, right? Or, or yeah, and we're not just going to lose like celebrities or whatever. Like no, like people we know in the community who who spend spend time with us, make content uh, for everyone, uh, and contribute in their own way, have this impact them. Yeah, 
Yeah, so we, I'm sorry, we learned yeah, about this good. over the weekend. And the thing I appreciated the most about Travis's post is at the end when he says, um, my favorite thing about this time is watching people some days become today. Long-term plans become one-week plans, people pivoting today into what they've really wanted to do all along. Um, and, you know, he's right. You know, people are taking this opportunity to check in with loved ones that maybe they didn't call frequently enough or, you know, to be nicer to people that they might not have been nice to or might not have considered before um, or just taking it easy on themselves. You know, people are taking naps. People are getting a good night's sleep. People are, you know, not grinding themselves to the bone at work anymore. You know, people are using this as an opportunity to be better. Um, and hopefully if everybody's better, you know, that will create some lasting change. So um, it was just sh so shocking to see this because, you know, we see these stories on the news and we don't it, 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 they're like nameless and faceless to us because we're not personally involved but you know Travis Wu you know he's a larger than life character whether you like him or not um, and the things he's done and the impact he's made in this community and it's like this is somebody we know in a six degrees kind of way that has lost somebody to this that is crazy right uh, which is incredible um, and unfortunate. So again, uh, condolences to his family and uh, and that's just that's just awful news. I don't know how to say it. Yeah. Um, the Hunter Burton Memorial, which was a terrible thing that they have turned into a very good thing, uh, is going to be moving to Arena because we can't all go down to Dallas this year. Uh, well, and, and did they say that craziness. this is replacing the event, or is this just something in the meantime? As I understand it, like for this year's version of the event, I believe it is moving entirely online okay because i know they were talking about moving into like september and then i guess they scrapped that can anyone uh, if anyone knows let me know in the chat uh or, or let us know in the comments okay. uh either way they denote that um there's a one-of-a-kind magic arena event on march 28th that's just a few days from now mm -hmm. um the day one's going to start at 10 a.m central time and day two slash top eight is going to start out at 10 a.m again central time on the 29th the entry is a 40 dollar donation to the hunter burton memorial open and prizes are $1,000 guaranteed prizes to top eight. Um, so that's really sweet. I'll put the link here in the chat to mtgmelee.com, which was uh, developed by Jason Flatford, a mm -hmm. friend and former coworker of ours. Yeah. And uh, Melee, by the way, boy, that's a good program. Um, yeah. I have heard nothing. I have heard, like, sometimes I'll be like, I've heard, you know, it's mostly good. Right, I've it heard works. Nothing but amazing things about MTG Melee. Yeah, they seem to have their fingers in a lot of tournaments lately, specifically ones that have just come up in spite of what's going on. And, you know, again, Hunter Burton Open, a very beloved tournament that would normally be shuttered in a time like this. It is finding mm -hmm. a way to carry on. They have a very important message that is, is so needed right now, um, especially when it comes to people staying at home and really having to deal with their mental health. And, you know, this was an event that was created because somebody, you know, took their own life. And so um, promoting mental health, you know, promoting this cause, donating to this cause, um, keeping people engaged are all things we really need right now. So I'm glad that they're finding a way to, to make it through. Nice. Yeah. The, and MDG Melee, you know, made by a magic judge, you know, for magic tournaments, for magic players. And it, it's all there. It all works. Right. It's all been going really swimmingly. They're not really repurposing, swimmingly. you know. Right. They're not turning software, software to this. Yeah. I right. do want to go back a minute because I don't know if we covered this or not. Um, while the actual Magic Fest online is not for Ruben or I, um, have you seen the Magic Online Super Qualifiers? No. I have not seen okay. the super qualifiers. So Arena has been getting a lot of love lately, but so is Magic Online. Um, they are adding these sort of PTQs to Magic Online um, that are called super qualifiers that can, oh, right. yeah, in, in various formats like Modern, Pioneer, Theros, Beyond Death, Sealed, and Legacy. Um, so I'm actually really, really excited about these. There's a Legacy one tomorrow morning, and I'm working from home now, and so there's a little part of me that's like... Can I do both? Like, I don't want to get back on the horse again. So these look really, really sweet. I'll go ahead and drop a link in the chat here. And you should check these out as well because I'm more of a Magic Online girl. And so if that's your if that's your venue, um, mm -hmm. go ahead and support them as well and, and keep nice. playing Magic. Uh, and to back it up, just, just a hair here for uh, Randy Galagos, who is doing a Magic Fest online special, 15% off all of his stuff, customs, tokens, artist proofs, and card signing and whatnot by mail. Um, so uh, any artists who want to get on this, obviously, we would love to promote you as well um, to be involved in all this. Hashtag MTG together, because we are. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Let's move I should, on here. I should have used that for our tweet today. I didn't do that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, the artists are being hit. The artists, I think, are not getting talked about enough. You know, there's and obviously there's a lot of people to consider here, so that's understandable. Right. But, you know, in sure. addition to the TOs and the pros and attendance fees and things like that, you know, also the artists that were really counting on this, especially the people like RK Post that are, you know, that grind pretty heavily going to every single event. You know, I've heard he's restarted his Patreon, I believe, oh, um, nice. or he's trying to come up with other ways to recoup this. And so mm-hmm. definitely show some love to the artists, you know, keep them in mind. Um, if you can't do anything, for them now at least remember them when the events start up again so you can make it up to them because yeah. um, they are one of the things that make events special and if you I don't want to hear another word about artists not being as important as with how much Netflix is being streamed right now and how many video games are being played mm-hmm. even your cosplayers you know people like Tappy and Olivia and Christine that you know do their thing and, and rely on being at events you know they're having to come up with new things to do as well whether it be streaming or, or what have you so support them to, I mean we're asking you to, to spread yourself pretty thin here but yeah. you know you can sort of choose the direction you want to go in but support somebody if you can whether it be an artist or a cosplayer or what have you there you go so um Icoria is coming. Icoria is coming. They've dropped the weird hints. Mm. We've seen what is now, and I'm going to bring up here, Emma Partlow uh, has posted a picture of a poster for Icoria Lair of Behemoths, uh, where it has, says, make your monster with a giant, scary, <laughs> kaiju-looking thing. Yeah, mm. what is that? That looks like a, that looks like a kaiju monster. Yeah, I mean, it looks very sort of animated almost, and and I'm 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 down for this. I'm I'm game for this. I don't know what's going on. There's two apparently two crazy mechanics in the set. Um, they've been hinting about. Um, who knows sort of the angle they're going to take. Uh, the uh, the previews are starting to percolate just a little bit, and um, they're good. They're good. Uh, they're good. <laughs> they're good. I can't talk about them Mag- until we can talk about are, them. Magic cards are good now. Magic yeah. cards are really good now. Like, really good. So, yeah. So, I'm very excited. Um, Ikora is just going to be a really weird bag because of the, the you know, where we're at in our lives right now. So, like, it's hard to, to really get the cards themselves. We're talking about physical cards. Um, yeah. And it's going to be, there's probably going to be a lot lower sales because there's not really big events that you're going to need to go chase some mythics for. So, stores aren't going to open a lot of packs for value if there's not a lot of value in the packs. So, like, you know, casual play is there. Don't get me wrong. But, like, you know, if, if Oko were in Ikoria, I don't know if Ikoria would be opened as much as Eldraine was because you could go to events and play with Oko where you right. couldn't if it was in Ikoria, essentially. Well, people have other ways to obtain the set. You know, you can buy packs on Arena, you can buy packs on Magic Online, you know. Mm-hmm. If there are any cards there that have an impact on eternal formats, you know, those singles will certainly get purchased. And, you know, we are not going to be here forever. And so, right. you know, we may not be purchasing these items now, but when the events start up again, we're probably going to be roaring out of the gate to get these right. cards. And I'm just excited to have something else to focus on and something else to talk about, even if the set is trash. Just give me something pretty to look some, at. Give me yeah. some new art. Give me some new text. Give me some new characters. Like, just give me something to chew on. Something yeah. to do instead of watching my paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> and just like looking at the walls and just like experiencing <laughs> emptiness. Oh, that's, a, that's a different finch than yesterday. <laughs> Uh, someone noted in the chat here, has anyone considered postponing the release? I, I think that there was a lot of serious talk at various yeah. times. Um, I think the, what sort of tipped it was, uh, as I understand it, dis- distributor uh, distribution systems, or uh, centers rather, were included as part of the essential businesses. So mm-hmm. as distribution uh, services include stuff like you know getting food around, and it can also yeah. get games around and, and cards yeah. around. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so the distributors that uh, I know are open, uh, are few because there's actually many su- shut down like ACD I think is down uh, Alliance is down there's all these people who uh, giant distributors where you get most of the board games that your FLGS has uh, and the magic cards that they're going to get some of that stuff is shut down so uh, it's kind of tough to say where you're like when the product is going to get there like magic is unique in that when they say there's a release date, by God, it's a release date. Like, <laughs> right. there's board game and card game companies all over the world. They're like, eh, you I know, mean, we'll shoot for this. Maybe. There is a such thing as force majeure. I'm sure you've had to deal with that in your, your life uh, of work. With what is that? Game. Force majeure? An act of God clause in your contract? <laughs> you've never heard of this before? No! It's something that precludes... This is the act of God yeah. Yeah, this yeah, is an clause. Act of, this is essentially like... Uh, if there's a flood that destroys your business, you don't have to necessarily meet the the contract. 
I've or never if heard of a that. tornado yeah. or or some you know fascinating worldwide okay. pandemic yeah. disease. Right. Um, I'm sure there's something there that is that is uh, enforceable if they chose. In this particular case, the cards have been printed. They're in the boxes. Right. Uh, they can go to where they need to go, and then it's for the stores and the dealers to deal with. I guess. Yeah. So um, and and as someone mentioned here, as far as I know, and I've been around a long time, never ever has a pre-release or a set release ever been postponed in mm. any way. Like, wow. Like ever. So we're talking 27 years of experience making these things happen on like clockwork. Um. That said, moving on here, Icoria is going to have an ebook. The ebook is coming out April 7th. Of course, all we have is a vague, scary looking monster. Now, that cover does look sweet, though. Whatever it is, but. Whatever it happens to be, it's fine. It's just a, a monster in some, in some fog, which yeah. is cool. They're not Your giving monsters. you anything. Like, if you click no. on the Amazon page, normally there's like a summary. Normally there's mm-hmm. something. Oh, no, girl. This website is bare. <laughs> They did leave it just blank enough for at still carry to have yes. some good Photoshop fun with it, though, which was nice. Uh, carry is all, all pretty caps, amazing. C A R Y. How dare you, mm-hmm. Carry? Uh, it is a three dollars and ninety nine cent ebook. We'll see sort of what the details are. Look, I'm I'm take take the story back. They're they not they're taking the story back. They're not doing this weird little like tiny updates across the spoiler season. Give us a real story, middle, beginning, and end, with characters and dialogue yeah, I mean, and the whole bit. If I get if I get a real magic story, I'll pay you three ninety nine. Like, I'll take it. I'll yeah, it. Uh, it's it's a way to get across, you know, your uh, your themes and whatnot. And uh, I got nowhere to go. I'll read your book. <laughs> We're here. Why not? Um, Sam at Ristic Studies has released a new Love video. Him. Oh yeah, about the. Uh, pastiche of ancient Greece Mm -hmm. and how uh, magic sort of uh, took ancient Greek things along with ancient Greek things that have been kind of remixed over the years. Um, The easiest example being sort of Krakens. Krakens were included in Clash of the Titans. They weren't originally in Greek mythology, but they've kind of been adopted and it's expected. So when we went back to Theros, we had to have Krakens. Otherwise, we could be going like, what are we doing here? This is is Theros. It's Kraken land. So there you go. Uh, All new video. There you go. Cracking it. Uh, so the, a tweet here uh, to Heuristic Studies themselves. You can go check out that video after you hang out with us, which is fun. Uh, but, of course, always awesome, as his work is. Just follow him in general. He's been keeping track of what he's been doing while he's isolated. Um, he started a blog as well. He is familiar i think he speaks italian and has friends in italy like i think he studied there he lived there for a time or something like that so he's been kind of relaying information as it comes directly from the source and um it's been very insightful and just fun like he he posted a video the other day of him dancing to diana ross and it was the funniest thing i've ever seen and just somebody who's really again using this time to you know let loose and have fun as much fun as you can have in a time like this and you know really showing people how to you know stay sane during all of this and and just a a much needed light in the darkness absolutely um moving on here uh to desperate ravings uh unfortunately card kingdom uh is going to have (laughs) shipping delays because of covid19 uh, as they're temporary, pa- they're temporarily pausing fulfillment operations at their warehouse for the next two weeks, starting tomorrow, Thursday, the twenty sixth. So, uh, so unfortunately, that's just the, and, and Channel Fireball is the exact same way, where they yeah, have suspended first, operations. Yeah. Right. So, like, this is what we have to deal with. Uh, everything needs to shut down and stop. Let's get a handle on yeah. what's going on, and then we'll kind of kick back up and start again. So. Um, regardless of the fact that they are technically competitors, we're all in this as magic players and there's lots of room for everyone to be here and to grow and, and to, and to sell magic cards. And so I they hope also added gets that they are out. offering a stipend to help support supplement unemployment benefits. They're making sure that their employees still have health benefits, um, despite the closure. And it sounds like they're just not only taking good care of their customers, but also taking care of their staff. And, you Very know, nice. we talk a lot about being able to really get behind businesses that you support. And so, you know, if, if you're, if you don't shop at cool stuff, Inc., which we don't know why you wouldn't, um, Car Kingdom is a company that you can get behind because they treat their people very well in addition to being very good at what they do. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Um, so, Ruben, I'll let you take this next one. Uh, it turns out that you got a little something from Patrick Stewart, who then led into someone else. <laughs> well, 
from D&D, and say then... I got something from him, but... Well, I mean, you know what I mean. You got inspiration. Right. There was an... Yeah, th- th- I was inspired. Um, yes. And originally, this uh, idea came about as a result of uh, Sir Patrick Stewart, uh, well-known for his work on in many things, but uh, in particular, Star Trek The Next Generation, and also uh, being a... Shakespearean actor, and mm-hmm. he was reading some sonnets uh, on his Twitter and his Instagram and Facebook page because he's known as a Shakespearean actor. Yeah. Inspired by that, Chris Perkins, who is the uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, creative director, decided he would read a portion of the Dungeon Master's Guide uh, mm. for his viewers. And I thought to myself, well, what am I known for? So I decided to read the opening letter. Uh, in the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, and uh, it it got a little bit of traction. I mean, oh, it's not it's not nearly as popular as um, uh, what as would Patrick I read, Stuart? But it is it's it's out there. Uh, I also today read the first page of the rule book from the LARP that I go to and posted that on my LARP page. Um, but that one was not going to get as many retweets, uh, so I decided to just keep that one to myself. Well, I was so thinking, I, I was, I was thinking, wasn't that like, isn't that sort of like a thing that you were going to keep doing, or was it just you read the letter and you're done? I, mean, I thought I you were going to keep, keep going. Doing it. I could I, keep reading. I thought it was fun. I was like, this is awesome. This gives right. you something to post, and people like it lets them know about Ravnica D and D and something that you're good at already. Absolutely, I, 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 I thought could it was cool. I could absolutely see, for example, the introductory um, section of Cranko's Way, which mm-hmm. is as as y'all I ran y'all through Cranko's Way, which is the uh, introductory campaign in. Uh, Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, and it's sort of malleable and organizable for whatever your group happens to be doing. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I could... Uh, there's, there's a couple of sections of various rules and, and D&D books that I could see reading. I thought it was fun. It just seemed like really cool stuff. I could do... I know what I could do. I could do an ASMR reading of the Comprehensive Rules of Dredge. Wow. 702.51. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta tap on the phone. You gotta tap on the mic. Tap on the mic. Dredge is a static ability that functions only while the copy of Dredge is in a player's graveyard. We we need to make that like a Patreon goal or something. <laughs> Get ten new patrons into the ASMR we go. Goodness gracious. Well, there's only like two facets to the rules. It'll be a very to, uh, short episode. I gotta read the rules section on, on lethal damage uh, killing creatures. That's what I do. Being a state-based effect. There was a very interesting thread from, uh, please don't let me butcher this guy's last name. Oh, uh, Ari, is it Ari Nye? Is that right? Mia. Close. Mia? Yeah. Mia? Okay. Uh, Ari Nia uh, at sixth comma. Um, where he talked about color pie violations. As I understand it, Ari is the representative in the, uh, the what's they call it? The something he's of been colors. He's spilling all sorts of tea ever since he started, which is great. Yeah. He, so he's he was the one that won the latest game designer search, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, he was the one that also joked about making Dredge white, which love him. Um, but no, this is a really neat thread where he talks about dinosaurs. Shout out to Tappy Toquas in the chat. Um, so he talks about the difference between experiments and dinosaurs. And so mm. um, dinosaurs are cards that used to be in the color pie but are now breaks because that effect has moved to another color. He uses Kelden Warlord, which was a really old red creature back in the day um, that derived its power and toughness based on other creatures you control. That is now seen as more of a white thing, so that's considered a dinosaur because the effect is still there. It just belongs to another color. And then there are experiments, which is where R&D tried something and then decided that it doesn't belong there. Um, And he uses Beast Within and uh, Generous Gift as examples. Mm -hmm. Um, This is a really fascinating thread and then he ends it really abruptly by saying i don't know what to do about this do you and it was like oh like this is cool and the feedback is really nice and i like that he's doing these things yeah it was cool and it was it's the council of colors thank you david a schultz in the mm-hmm. chat uh so he is the white representative on the council of colors so he talks about like you know what makes white special and what can white do and whatnot and so when you see that beast within is kind of not what they wanted. They really wanted Generous Gift, which is the same spell in white. Uh, I would love to see Generous Gift in standard. That would be a terrific card that I would be happy to play. Um, I think that would be nice, but he goes back into the old school where there was Elvish Spirit Guide. Well, that turned into Simeon Spirit Guide that they're okay with. Um, 
and the skulking mechanic and whatnot. And then, of course, when you went to, to Planar Chaos and they're like, all right, black should not be tapping creatures. That's enough. <laughs> and why is white doing direct damage? Why does blue have vigilance? And why does green have anthem effects? It doesn't really make sense. <laughs> right. And it's like, yeah, you could try to explain it, but harmonize is kind of going to be a thing forever. <laughs> And they just got to deal with it. Like, sorry. That's just kind of a... Who would have thought that we'd ever get to a point where green can do anything? I, I didn't, you know? It's just... I, yeah. I mean, you go from... <laughs> they started from the bottom and now they're here. So hey. I don't know if there's anything wrong with that. Um, okay. We'll move on here to Splash Damage. Uh, Antiques the- Roadshow. We we don't get to often talk about Antiques Roadshow no, on mean, old Magic Mike's. Y'all don't. Y'all may not. But Listen. I follow the Antiques Roadshow on Facebook <laughs> because I'm an old man. Listen, yes. I, I, I'm seek, I love me some Frontline, okay? Me and PBS are like this, mm-hmm. and even I've never watched Antiques Roadshow. Ken Show. Burns like, Baseball? That is my home turf. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched yeah. Antiques Roadshow like in the 90s. I was, yeah. I was amazed that it show is still on. I've yeah. seen every episode of Wishbone. Oh, Wishbone. Wishbone. Arthur, Arthur the Ghost Arthur. Rider or GTFO. Oh, is, Ghost Rider was so good. I got my felt tip but pen right here. Masterpiece Theater and Antiques Roadshow. Like now we're into old man territory. I have to raise coming <laughs> into my beard. We've anyway. lost like half the Are we going to get to math net? I will do Bitch! this. No, I will not. do this. Don't. No, make me mad at you oh that my. tuesday was my life how dare you <laughs> how dare you so good all right look there was a full beta set on an antiques road show and from current discussions they might have just been completely fake um oh. but there's no doubt getting magic the gathering beta cards on a pbs show that you can yeah. now reference to your aunt or your mom is yeah. a thing you can do now that's a win this is a it doesn't matter if the cards were fake to you and to me and to everybody in chat what matters is Magic the Gathering was shown to have value to your aunt and your old Uncle Reuben who would have otherwise thrown your old box of cards when you went away for the weekend, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, and it's a great, it's a really nice clip. The guy that was talking about the cards was very animated, very excited, mm-hmm. very knowledgeable mm-hmm. about Magic the Gathering, whether or not he could identify them as fakes, which, mind you, he could probably identify like a fake, like Iroquois blanket. Or a, or you know some or, confederate or a clock uniform. or something. Yeah, <laughs> right. but if he can't get beta cards, I'm gonna let him slide on that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, you know, I think that this this clip is just a, a solid win. Yeah, it was really uh, uplifting. I mean, she didn't seem. I mean, I'm a fan of you know all press is good press, and so if it doesn't have to do with butt cracks or someone being driven from a community, I'm all for it. So it was a good story. You know, her husband happened to play. She kind of gives some background. He didn't do anything wrong. She doesn't seem weirded out by it. You know, like a lot of the stereotypes that people pull from when they go to gaming or magic just aren't here you know you mentioned the guy being very into this she seems excited this is just a win i was really happy to see this um i actually uh put some stories in the wrong place uh which is why we're going to back up just a little bit just a little bit uh to desperate ravings so missouri uh, mtg uh this would be jeremy aronson uh, was trying to run a $20,000 event uh, with a $200 buy-in oh, right. uh, weeks ago. Kind of fell through, obviously, because we're in the world we're living in right now in 2020. Yep. Uh, but he said, look, for April 2021, how about we do a $100,000 event? $200 buy-in, was it 400 slots, something like that? Sure. Uh, and, yeah. Not a math it, scientist. Well, all I know is it sold out in half an hour. So yeah. that shot. is... That is a real thing. Uh, he got to post here. The tournament sold out. There's a wait list already, um, and uh, and that's that's pretty incredible. Uh, that I think you know when when you think of who plays Legacy and the people who have four thousand dollar decks just hanging out, this is what you're looking for. It's like make it special, make it unique, make it cool, and hell, you can make it expensive. That's the thing. You know, you're playing with big money. Then let's play for big money. And that's what you can do as a result of of these types of events. So, uh, so good on well, you're on You're also him. more likely to pay for a better experience. You know, one of the reasons why Eternal Weekend was such an attractive option was because you were getting good seats. You were getting spaced out from your opponents. You know, you were mm-hmm. getting fixed seating for a time there. You know, you were paying for security. You know, there was somebody checking bags at the start. And so, you know, a standard player may balk at paying 20 extra dollars for nice tables and chairs where, you know, somebody who plays in Eternal Format, if you've already spent money on a manager 
Ukraine or, you know, a foil Russian import or what have you, you will pay for water coolers. You will pay for, you know, good lighting. You'll pay for all of these things. And, and that's, and, and you can make these events even better. And so that's one of the reasons why, you know, me and many others really gravitate towards these is we just want a better experience. You know, we don't want to be eating chicken tendies on a squeaky chair with splinters on the table. You know, Chicky we're better tendies. than that. Chicky yeah. tendies. Chicky yeah. tendies, y'all. Look, um, one of the things that Gavin Verhey is doing as a result of being stuck at the house... Uh, Besides is growing ma- a beard? Besides growing a beard, which is pretty <laughs> I cool. I am completely here for Scruffy Gavin. We are. And uh, he's, you know... It, you, you you work with what you got. So he's been doing these little updates uh, every day on Twitter and Instagram where he tells you a little bit about Ikoria's commander stuff. Um, and in particular, cards that are coming up in the commander product. For example, they're gonna, they have a hound that generates fetch counters. So you can play fetch with oh your hound, God. which sounds amazing. <laughs> so stuff like that is what you'll find currently at Gavin Verhey uh, is where you'll find it. And uh, and I just love this stuff. This he is said something about giving white amazing ramp marketing. Too, which got a lot of people really excited. And he, he said it's like repeatable ramp. And sure. it's like, what? It's what Slytherin like, Ties does, right? Well, a little bit. You know, Weathered I mean, Wayfair is a $10 card. I, I, I'm under the impression this is going to be like actual land sure. as opposed to like mana. Yeah. Right. Um, and I believe Tithe is actually on the reserve list, which is ridiculous. Ugh. But, you know, whatever. I'll just go ahead and reference my Visions cards here. That's what I do. <laughs> You're like, what? It is, it is part of the reserve list. With your, with your Tithe and your Math Net. What's, uh, what's a Tithe? Oh, terribly old. What does that do? Um, <laughs> we definitely want to uh, talk about Jimmy Wong and his yep. song about the Chinese virus. Yes. Um, which uh, I think he tackled quite brilliantly. Mm-hmm. So if it, long-time viewers of Jimmy Wong will remember that he sort of exploded on into fame with his first uh, musical number, which was making fun of a racist student at uh, USC, I believe. Mm-hmm. And he sort of was like, hey, don't break it down to just stereotypes of Asian people. And that's sort of how, where the the zenith of Jimmy Wong started. And, of course, now then he went to video game high school and uh, was is in Mulan that is coming out. And now we have the Chinese virus and Jimmy's uh, just beautiful, awesome, hilarious response video that yep. rightly went, uh, uh, I don't want to say viral anymore. It rightly went. Um, <laughs> it spread throughout the it, internet. It did. Um, <sighs> in a positive way. Uh, and it's it's cool. It's it's just, don't don't call it the Chinese virus, right, John? Yeah, just don't stupid. do it. Please don't. Um, and, uh, and Aaron, I don't know if you care. But there is a Vampire the Masquerade card game. It's on Kickstarter. I saw this. Oh, my God. I got tagged in this so much. So uh, the Vampire, I'm a huge Vampire the Masquerade fan. Uh, There was a Kickstarter that was launched for a game called Vendetta, a competitive card game where you fight to conquer the role of Prince of Chicago as one of the clans of the Camarilla. Um, The goal was only 43,236. It is at 168,000 with six days to go. So almost three to over three times what they wanted. Um, This looks immersive. This looks fantastic. Fantastic. I was trying to uh, read up on it before the show. Um, just a gorgeous game. Uh, a lot of neat rewards. You get a free uh, metal onk token, an ambition token. Nice. There's a lot of callbacks to the game in terms of the clans, in terms of what they do. Uh, lots of talk of frenzy, of blood tokens, diablery tokens. Just um, this is right up my alley. So I am definitely going to be keeping up with this. So um, I Aaron- don't. Do you watch Do you watch L.A. by Night with my girlfriend? Are you Donna? using this as an opportunity to plug your amazing I girlfriend? I sure am. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. Drop the plugs. Go yeah, on. Listen, so cool. I, I admit I have not watched it, but I may have to start. So if you go to twitch.tv slash worlds of darkness, you can watch L.A. by Night Fridays at okay. 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 right. p.m. Eastern time. Uh, the epilogues for season four uh, start this Friday, I believe. Okay. Uh, the season finale was last week, so you can go check them out on the Twitch or YouTube channels. Okay, and, look at and, you plugging in. And wow. And then, tell, and then tell them how much you like uh, Cynthia. I... <laughs> See that's that's Tell the fringe like benefit. Like her. That's the fringe <laughs> benefit of being right? with the wrestler is that he will rock in that promotion. He was rolling in. <laughs> well, for a while there he did it. We remember when it, when Saving Throw first started, and we had to remind him to plug that thing. And now look at him. But I, I was know. I was less of a shameless uh, shyster at that point. <laughs> uh, Jesus. Christ. Whoa. Woo. I was, I was more of a. I was more 
self-contained. Oh, oh, Jesus. Goodness. All right. Well, let's go ahead and turn the corner here to the finisher. On a recently aired episode of Antiques Roadshow, a woman in Phoenix brought in a three-ring binder with an entire beta set in baseball card sleeves, power nine and all, to be graded by the experts. The set was valued between sixty-five dollars to $100,000, but many dealers and internet sleuths have pointed out that it is likely fakes all the way down. But we all have those stories of shoeboxes full of cardboard gold hiding in grandma's attic or hidden, or hidden gems hiding in flea market bargain bins. So tell me, what was the best lost and found magic card disco- discovery you've heard of, Ruben? Well... This is a true story. My cousin sent me a shoebox full of his old cards one time, and in it were about a dozen misprint prophecy commons, mm. uh, which was pretty cool. Um, but probably the greatest magic trick I've ever pulled was convincing these two to let me co-host. <laughs> hey yo. Especially with that as ASMR. Yeah, we Goodness. we still we still wonder what we were thinking. So actually, hey, I was the last one recruited for this show, so I didn't really didn't have a say. That's true. <laughs> Decent point, but Aaron? Well, I've gotten upwards of four, five, and even six cards for the price of one just by playing Dredge instead of settling for my draw step. But i got to say, the best deal I ever got in Magic was every time I've blocked somebody on Twitter. Mm. Trust me, it's almost as good as activating Bazaar. Just whoop, whoop, just bam. Whoop. Just a little done. pellet, just a little the little shock there. Just, mm, just every time. Right. Just. It's your feed. You know, you just like, get out of here. I'm like Lizzo. You know, she twerks and plays the flute. I twerk and block people. Just, oh, 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 oh yeah, just, oh, oh <laughs> two, okay, oh, God, can't forget you. Just, yeah. Uh, one time, uh, naming, naming no, no businesses or companies that I know, one time there was a Jim Mint Unlimited Time Walk that had stuck to a prodigal sorcerer in a box of bulk. Like, like gem mint. Like, it was oh. nutty. Wow. Uh, one time, I was going to buy an absolutely insane collection for a stupid low price until I realized someone had written their name in Sharpie on the back of every <laughs> single card in it. Whoa. I kid you not. I was like, I was like, are you serious? And then he's like, they showed me and they like fanned it out. This, this guy's name is on every single card. Uh, yes. Something about them getting stolen. Hell, I had the fortune to have someone walk into and sell an artist proof black lotus. One time that was accidentally resold at a show for 1% of the asking price. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) But by far, the best I've ever done on a magic deal was tricking the entire world into letting me tap their cards so you don't have to. Mm. That's right. Bell, you bell, you bell. That's awesome. And that ends another live episode of Magic Mics. Thank you for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me and thank you for continuing to support us because obviously a lot of people need your money right now and you're choosing to give it to us. So thank you for tuning in and for supporting us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you. See you next week. That's right. I'm going to move on here to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, my co-hosts, Aaron Campbell and Ruben Bressler. You guys for watching or listening and hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. Please follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online on our Discord, Twitch.tv at Magic Mics, on Twitter at Magic Mics Cast, our Magic Mics subreddit, and like the Magic Mics page on Facebook. Talk to us privately at Magic Mics Podcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio-only podcast at Magic Mics Podcast at Libsyn.com. Our final slide tunes or Spotify, or just join us here next week. Same time, same place for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.